Shalom. Kohlaimla Yahawa Bahashem. Yahweh Shai Bahashem. Rakah Kadash. All praises be to the Most High, Yahweh. In the name of His Son and our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai. Much respect and honor to the brothers that are doing the work in truth and sincerity, risking their lives and freedom to do so, and pushing this gospel throughout the four corners of the earth. Salutations to the hopeful elect that are scattered abroad in double honors and respect to the elders and the apostles of Great Millstone. Coming back at you with another lesson entitled, It is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the Lord. But what is that talking about? Well, we're going to read about it. First of all, let's go here to Proverbs 16. And four, the book of Proverbs, chapter 16, verse four. The Lord hath made all things for himself, yea, even the wicked for the day of evil. So that evil means bad times. Judgment. That's what that evil is. Let's go to Zephaniah. Zephaniah, and we're going to go to three and five. So everything we see on this earth that occurs, murders, deaths, are all ordained by the Most High. So evil means bad times, which are judgments. Let's go to Zephaniah three and five. Book of Zephaniah, chapter 3, verse 5. The Lord, the just Lord, is in the midst thereof. He will not do iniquity. Every morning doth he bring his judgment to light. He faileth not, but the unjust know no shame. So the Lord sending forth these decrees. So what he does is he raises up hit men, for lack of better words. He raises up assassins or assassinators. Let's read that again. Zephaniah 3, verse 5. The just Lord is in the midst thereof. He will not do iniquity every morning, do if he bring his judgment to light. He felleth not, but the unjust knoweth no shame. So the Lord is raising up hit men to bring judgment or to do his will on this earth. That's why we went to Proverbs 16 and 4. The Lord hath made all things for himself even the wicked for the day of evil. So it is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the Lord. It says that this Joel Rifkin sentenced to 203 years in prison for the murders of nine women between 1989 and 1993, though it is believed that he may have killed up to 17 victims, and all of his victims were women. The Bible says a woman is not supposed to gad abroad, but in the daughter of Babylon, America, they gad abroad. It says Rifkin committed his first murder in 1989, killing Heidi Bouch in his home in East Meadow. He then dismembered her body removing her teeth and fingertips, putting her head in a paint can, which he left in the woods on a golf course in Hopewell, New Jersey, disposing of her legs farther north and dumping her remaining torso and arms into the East River around New York City. And in March 5, 1989, Bulch's severed head was discovered 
on the seventh hole of the golf course. Her severed head. These are Edomites. And Malachi 1 and 4 says that Esau Edom is the border of wickedness. On March 5, 1989, Vulture's severed head was discovered on the seventh hole of the golf course. On April 8, 1989, Vulture's legs were found in Pequonot Creek near Jefferson Township, New Jersey, and Vulture's remains were not identified until 2013. Over the next four years, it is presumed Rifkin killed more than 16 other women. See? So these are judgments that the Most High is bringing out. Every day, judgment goes forth that, it, that occurs here on earth. Ted Bundy. For the 2003 biographical film, Ted Bundy, or Theodore Robert Bundy, born Colwell, November 24, 1946, an American serial killer who kidnapped, raped, and murdered numerous young women and girls during the 1970s and possibly earlier than that. So these are judgments that we're reading about. It says, after more than a decade of denial, he confessed to 30 homicides committed in seven states between 1974 and 1978. His true victim total is unknown and believed by some investigators to be higher. Bundy was regarded as handsome and charismatic. So this man is the devil. So the Bible says that the serpent was the most subtle beast in the field. So it's describing the forefather of the Edomites. And that spirit passed down through Cain and was regenerated or reincarnated into Esau Edom. And they received the mark of Cain, the mark of leprosy. Bundy was regarded as handsome and charismatic traits that he exploited to win the trust of victims in society. He would typically approach his victims in public places, feigning injury or disability or impersonating an authority figure before knocking them unconscious, taking them to secluded locations to rape and strangle them. He sometimes revisited the victims, grooming and performing sexual acts with the decomposing corpses until putre putrefaction. The fifth stage of death, this man was having intercourse with the decomposing bodies until the fifth stage of death following polar mortis or algamortis, mortis, rigor mortis. This process references the breaking down of a body of an animal such as human post-mortem in broad terms. Wow, this is pure wickedness. So Esau Edom is described as the border of wickedness. The Bible is an amazingly accurate book. He sometimes revisited his victims, grooming and performing sexual acts with decomposing corpses. Absolutely sickening. He de decapitated at least 12 victims and kept some of the severed heads as mementos in his apartment. So mementos are souvenirs, like gifts or war trophies. Who does the Bible say was a cunning hunter? Esau, Edom, in Genesis 25. 
though they are carrying forward the personality traits and characteristics of their forefather, Evil E. This is unbelievable. Unbelievable. The Bible is absolutely an amazing book. Let's go here. So what are we reading about? Falling into the hands of the living power. I remember running into a uh, married couple, both Edomites, and they practice black magic. They understood reincarnation and they believe that if you do black magic, then you come back. Your spirit is reincarnated and you pay for doing those black magical deeds. But in their contorted mind, they believe by doing white magic, then you come back and be rewarded when your body is reincarnated. But in the eyes of the Most High, witchcraft is witchcraft. So they'll come back and pay for whatever ungodly deeds that they did on this earth. So let's read this. Okay, let's go to Hebrews 10. Verse 32, but call to remembrance the former days in which after ye were illuminated, ye endured a great fight of afflictions. So we endure hardships based on what we've done as our forefathers. So we come back in the third and fourth generation. Let's read about it. Hebrews 10 Verse 31, it is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. See, so these are the hands of the living God. Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai. You're not going to see a large hand crack the sky. He's talking about his chest pieces that he's moving around on the earth. Let's go back to that. Hebrews 10, verse 31. It is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living power. Let's go to verse 30. For we know him that hath said, Vengeance belongeth unto me. I will recompense, saith the Lord. And again, the Lord shall judge his people. So this is the Most High raising up these demons, monsters, to bring your worst possible fears imaginable upon you. And a lot of our women are out of order, walking around proud, half naked, and riding the cock carousel. Guess who they're targeting? You got it, women. That's a fact. They're only targeting, well, 90, 90% Plus, somewhere around 95% of their victims are women. Let's go here. Let's read about this devil. The Green River Killer. Gary Ridgeway. It says, Gary Leon Ridgeway, known as the Green River Killer, is an American serial killer. He was initially convicted of 48 separate murders. As a part of a plea bargain, another conviction was added, bringing the total number of convictions to 49, making him the second most prolific serial killer in the United States history, according to confirmed murders. And see, under this wicked society, they glamorize and popularize these wicked men. They make them into celebrities. Evil is good here, and good is evil. See, watch this. Was added, making the total number of convictions 49, making him the second most prolific serial killer in the United States history, according to confirmed murders. He killed many teenage girls and women in the state of Washington 
during the 1980s and 1990s. See, it is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living power. Let's go back. Most of Ridgeway's victims were alleged to be sex workers and women vulnerable and women in vulnerable circumstances, including underage runaways. The press gave him his nickname after the first five victims were found in Green River. This man is a monster. I want to show you something here. When we read this, I almost forgot to do this. Hebrews 10 and 31. It is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living power. Let's look up that word hands. I'm going to go into that word hands. Comes from the Hebrew. Strong's G 5495. Chayr. 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 The help. Wow. The help or agency of anyone by means of anyone applied to the Most High, symbolizing his might. Activity, power, creating the universe, upholding and preserving, punishing, determining and controlling the destinies of men. So the Most High is behind this. This is his work. Where were we? Right here to this devil. So most of his victims were alleged sex workers. It says that the Green River Killer strangled his victims, usually by hand, but sometimes using ligatures. This guy here is Gary Ridgeway. And then he would return back to the bodies to have sexual intercourse with them. So these are Edomites. That's called necrophilia. Necrophilia. So the Bible is accurate calling the Edomites the wicked or the border of wickedness. And then look what they do. He was spared the death penalty. According to the Bible, if you shed man's blood, by the man shall your blood be shed. So this place is cursed. Murderers are walking around. Pedophiles. All types of wickedness. It says throughout the 1980s and 1990s, Ridgeway is believed to have murdered at least 71 teenage girls and women near Seattle and Tacoma, Washington. In one moment, in court statements, Ridgeway later reported that he had killed so many that he lost count. Wow. A majority of the murders occurred between 1982 and 1984, though victims were believed to be either sex workers or runaways. Wow. Ridgeway would wrap his forearm around the front of their necks and use the other arm to pull back as tightly as he could, strangling them. He killed most victims in his home, his truck, or secluded areas. Most of their bodies were dumped in wooded areas around the Green River, Seattle-Tacoma International Airport. Wow, these men are straight savage. Let's go to this devil here, Jeffrey Dahmer. And these are household common names now. Most people have heard about these savage monsters. Jeffrey Dahmer, also known as the Milwaukee Cannibal or Milwaukee Monster. So cannibals, cannibals eat 
human flesh. He was convicted an American serial killer or sex offender who committed the murder and dismemberment of 17 men and boys. So he would also rape the young boys and the men, kill them, and then eat them. Do you still think the Bible is inaccurate or a fairy tale book calling Esau Edom the border of wickedness? Dismemberment of 17 men and boys between 1978 and 1991. Many of his later murders involved necrophilia, that's sexual intercourse with dead bodies, and permanent preservation of body parts, typically, typically all or part of the skeleton. They would also do this to the Israelites during lynchings, where they would keep body parts for souvenirs, including the testicles. Although he was diagnosed with borderline personality disorder. Okay, these men are Edomite terrorists. Why is it always a clinical diagnosis for these wicked men? They're terrorists. He was also diagnosed with schizopile personality disorder. Sounds like schizophrenia. See? Schizotypal disorder, personality disorder characterized by thought, disorder, paranoia, characteristic form of social anxiety, derealization, transient psychosis, and unconventional beliefs. He's a terrorist. Okay, let's just let's just make this simple. And a murderer. According to the Bible, he is a murderer. Worthy of death. Dahmer was found to be legally sane at his trial. He was convicted of 15 of the 16 murders he committed in Wisconsin and sentenced to 15 terms of life. See, that goes against the Bible. Murderers are supposed to be put to death. Dahmer was later sentenced to a 16 term of life imprisonment. Wow. Let's get this key point here and then we'll keep it moving. Adolescent in high school. Um, let's go here. It says, when he reached puberty, Dahmer discovered that he was gay, but he did not tell his parents. He had a brief relationship with a teenage boy Although he claimed he never had intercourse, he began fantasizing about dominating and controlling a completely submissive male partner in his early to mid-teens and master masturbatory fantasies gradually evolved to focusing on the chest and torso of his male fantasies. Wow. When he was 16, Dahmer conceived a fantasy of rendering unconscious a particular male jogger that he found attractive and then making sexual use of his body. Absolutely sickening. Murder of Stephen Hicks. Dahmer committed his first murder in 1978 three weeks after his, after his graduation. At the same time, he was living alone in the family home in Bath. On June 18, Dahmer picked up a hitchhiker named Stephen Mark Hicks, who was almost 19. Dahmer lured the youth to his house on the pretext of the two young men drinking alcohol together. Hicks, who had been hitchhiking to a rock concert in Chippewa, Lake Park, Ohio, agreed to accompany Dahmer to his house upon the promises of a few beers. Dahmer, with Dahmer, as he had the house to himself. According to Dahmer, the sight of the bare chest Hicks standing at the roadside stirred his sexual feelings. Although 
when Hicks began talking about girls, he knew that any sexual passes that he made would be rebuked or rebuffed. After several hours of talking, drinking, and listening to music, Hicks wanted to leave. I didn't want him to go. That's what Dahmer said. In response, Dahmer bludgeoned Hicks with a 10-pound dumbbell. He later stated that he struck Hicks twice from behind with the dumbbell as Hicks sat upon a chair. When Hicks fell unconscious, Dahmer strangled him to death with the bar of the dumbbell and stripped the clothes off of Hicks' body before exploring his chest and hands, then masturbating as he stood above the corpse. The following day, excuse me, the following day, Dahmer dissected Hicks' body in the basement. He later buried the remains in a shallow grave in his backyard. He dissolved the flesh in acid before flushing the solution down the toilet. He crushed the bones with a sledgehammer and scattered them in the woodland behind the family home. Okay, let's go here. So what's happening here? Let's go here. So these are spirits that been on the earth before that came back or were re reincarnated, regenerated for judgment. So these are spirits. Let's read about it. Wow, let's go to Ecclesiastes 3, verse 4. Ecclesiastes 3, verse 14. I know that whatsoever God doeth, it shall be forever. Nothing can be put to it, nor anything taken from it. And God doeth it, that men should fear before him. See? So these are judgments of the Most High. Ecclesiastes 3 verse 15. That which have been is now, and that which is to be hath already been, and God required that which is past. What is this talking about? Our spirits. Let's prove that. Let's go to Ecclesiastes 6 verse 10. So our spirits come back. In the third and fourth generation. Ecclesiastes 6 verse 10. That which have been is named already. And it is known that it is man. Neither may be. Ecclesiastes 6 verse 10. That which have been is named already. And it is known that it is man. Neither may he contend with him that is mightier than he. So we cannot control what the Most High decides to do to our soul. Let's go to verse 9. Better is the sight of the eyes than the wandering of the desire. This is also vanity and vexation of spirit. So these are our spirits that come back for judgment. The Most High is called the father of spirits. Let's go up here to verse Ecclesiastes 3, verse 2. A time to be born and a time to die. A time to plant and a time to pluck up that which is planted. A time to kill and a time to heal. A time to break down and a time to build up. So this is what the Most High is doing in his movie. Let's show you that. Deuteronomy 32, verse 39. See now that I, even I, am he, and there is no God with me. I kill and I make alive. I wound and I heal. Neither is there any that can deliver out of my hand. See? So these men are the wicked, the hand of the Most High's judgment. Let's go back to Hebrews 10 and 31. It is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. So the Most High is in control of both good and evil. Deuteronomy 32 verse 39 again. 
See now that I, even I, am he, and there is no God with me. I kill and I make alive. I wound and I heal. Neither is there any that can deliver out of my hand. So these spirits come back to be judged on the earth. That's why we said, let's go back to Ecclesiastes 3. Let's go to verse 15. That which has been is now, and that which is to be have already been, and God required that which is past. So when your spirit come back on the earth, you're going to either be rewarded or punish and judge. Where are you going to be judged at? Let's read about it. Ecclesiastes 3, verse 16. And moreover, I saw under the sun the place of judgment. Where is that at? That's on the planet Earth. Not some distant land somewhere or burning underground. Let's read it again. Ecclesiastes 3, verse 16. And moreover, I saw under the sun the place of judgment, that wickedness was there, and the place of righteousness, that iniquity was there. I said in my heart, God shall judge the righteous and the wicked, for there is a time there for every purpose and for every work. So this is the most high's work that's doing these things. The most high controls good and evil. Let's go to Isaiah 45, verse 7. The book of Isaiah, chapter 45, verse 7. I form the light and create darkness. I make peace and create evil. I, the Lord, do all these things. See? So that's why we read Proverbs 16 and 4. The Lord have made all things for himself. Yea, even the wicked for the day of evil. And that evil means bad times. So these men are doing the will of the Most High. Let's go to Edmund Kemper. An American serial killer, serial rapist, also necrophilia. These wicked Edomites love to have intercourse with dead bodies. It's okay, he murdered 10 people, including his paternal grandparents and mother. This guy murdered his mother and grandparents. Unbelievable. Absolutely unbelievable. You've got to be a monster to murder your mother and your grandparents. And we're running out of time, but he also had intercourse with the skull of his grandmother. You heard that correctly. Okay, let's keep going. I'm just going to read a couple of key points, and then I'm going to keep it moving. I'm not going to read all of this. Okay. It says in August 1964, at the age of 15, Kemper was sitting at the kitchen table with his grandmother, Maud Maltilda Huey Kemper. When they had an argument, in rage, Kemper stormed off and retrieved a rifle that his grandfather had given him for hunting. He then re-entered the kitchen and fatally shot his grandmother in the head before firing twice more into her back. Some accounts mention that she also suffered multiple post-mortem stab wounds with a kitchen knife. So he even stabbed her after she died. When Kemper's grandfather, Edmund Emil Kemper, returned from grocery shopping, Kemper went outside and fatally shot him in the driveway. He was unsure of what to do next, so he phoned his mother, who told him to contact the local police. Kemper called the police and waited to be taken into custody. 
After his arrest, Kemper said that he just wanted to see what it felt like to kill his grandmother and testified that he killed his grandfather so he would not have to find out what his wife, that his wife was dead. Straight savage. I mean, just uh, the Bible is amazingly an act, the most accurate book on planet Earth. Somewhere we said he had intercourse with the skull. I think it was either his mother or his uh, or his grandmother. So when it says that they are the border of wickedness, the Bible does not lie. It says here between nineteen. Between May 1972 and April 1973, Kemper killed eight people. He would pick up female students. See, so a lot of these judgments are executed against females. He would pick up female students who were hitchhiking and take them to isolated areas where he would shoot, stab, smother, or strangle them. He would then take their bodies back to his home, where he decapitated them to perform eromatio, and that is having oral sex with a cut-off or a severed head. This is what he was doing, having oral sex with the heads. Wow. Perform Eromatio on their severed heads and had sexual intercourse with their corpses and then dismembered them. During this 11-month murder spree, he killed five college students, one high school student, his mother, and his mother's best friend. Kemper has stated in interviews that he often searched for victims after having arguments with his mother and that she refused to introduce him to women attending the university where she worked. He recalled, she would say, you're just like your father. You don't deserve to get to know them. Psychiatrists and Kemper himself have espoused the belief that the young women were surrogates for his ultimate target, his mother. So he would take out his anger and frustration on other women because his main objective was to kill his own mother. So the Bible is describing them as the wicked. Let's go to Isaiah 14 and 21. The book of Isaiah chapter 14 verse 21. Prepare slaughter for his children for the iniquity of their fathers that they do not rise, nor possess the land, nor fill the face of the world with cities. So these are Edomites that he's talking about here. Because the Bible is describing the wicked being judged in the last days. And that's going to start with Armageddon or Hadamagadwan, mountain of troops. Judgment with nuclear fire, followed by the laser and chariot fire. Let's read it again. Isaiah 14, verse 21. Prepare slaughter for his children, for the iniquity of their fathers, that they do not rise, nor possess the land, nor fill the face of the world with cities. For I will rise up against them, saith the Lord of hosts, and cut off from Babylon the name and remnant and son and nephew, saith the Lord. And I will also make it a possession for the bittern, and the pools of water, and I will sweep it with the besom of destruction, saith the Lord of hosts. That is nuclear fire. That besom of destruction is a sweeping broom of fire. It's going to consume Babylon. So we read this key point that in Proverbs 16 and 4, the Lord have made all things for himself, yea, even the wicked for the day of evil. So the men of the Lord fear the Most High. We fear Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, because we understand his judgments. And we understand that our spirits come back in the third and fourth generation to be judged. Let's read 
Proverbs 28, verse, wow, we got to go here. Proverbs 28, verse 4. They that forsake the law praise the wicked, but such as keep the law contend with them. And that's what the hopeful elect are doing, keeping this word, coming back to this word. Proverbs 28, verse 5. Evil men understand not judgment, but they that seek the Lord understand all things. So the hopeful elect understand that these are the hand of the Lord or judgments that are taking place here on earth. Nothing happens without the Most High sending forth the decree. So these are what you would call left-hand side spirits. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, pursuant to Ephesians chapter 6. So these are left-hand side spirits created for vengeance. Let's go here to Second Chronicles. I think it's 18... And 22. So these are left hand side spirits. All our spirits return to the Father when we die. No such thing as going to some distant hell planet. See, so these are left hand side spirits that work for the Most High to bring forth judgment. Let's read about them. Second Chronicles 18, verse 22. Now therefore, behold, the Lord hath put a lion spirit in the mouth of these thy prophets, and the Lord hath spoken evil against thee. See? Let's go to verse 21. Second Chronicles 18, verse 21. And he said, I will go out and be a lion spirit in the mouth of all his prophets. And the Lord said, Thou shalt entice him, and thou shalt also prevail. Go out and do even so. Let's go to Second Chronicles 18, verse 20. Then there came out a spirit and stood before the Lord and said, I will entice him. And the Lord said unto him, Wherewith? So we're reading about lying or evil, wicked spirits in the heavenly realm. This is a part of the Lord's counsel. These spirits are left-hand side spirits of the wicked. The Most High has created good and evil. And he has also created spirits that were created for the sole purpose of bringing forth judgment or spirits created for vengeance on the earth. That's why we read in Hebrews where is it at? Vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. Something like that. Where is it at? Hebrews 10. Right here. Hebrews 10, verse 30. For we know him that have said, Vengeance belongeth unto me. I will recompense, saith the Lord. And again, the Lord shall judge his people. It is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living power. So, the Most High created the left-hand side spirits of the Edomites and the right-hand side spirits of the sons of Jacob. So, we have not been taught the God of the Bible at all. No one is walking around fearing Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, other than a hopeful elect of Israel. Evil men understand not judgment. Let's read about the true power of the Bible. Let's go to Isaiah 66, verse 4. The book of Isaiah, chapter 66, verse 4. I also will choose their delusions and will bring their fears upon them. So do you think being choked out, sodomized, strangled, tortured, slaughtered. Is that not bringing fears upon you? So who's behind this? 
the Spirit of the Lord is judging you. That's who's doing this. So these are left-hand side spirits or evil or wicked or sinister spirits on the left-hand side. Let's go back to that. So this is why we fear the Most High. Let's go back to Isaiah 66, verse 4. I also will choose their delusions and will bring their fears upon them. Because when I call, none did answer. When I spake, they did not hear. But they did evil before mine eyes and chose that in which I delighted not. Hear the word of the Lord, ye that tremble at his word. Your brethren that hated you, that cast you out for my name's sake, said, Let the Lord be glorified, but he shall appear to your joy. And they shall be ashamed. So the Most High is going to reward his servants, the prophets. And he's going to bring a wicked, brutal, evil day upon those that hate his word, that hate his prophets, that hate Bible prophecy, and that hate his judgments. Let's read about that. Isaiah 66 verse 5. A voice of noise from the city, a voice from the temple, a voice of the Lord that rendereth recompense to his enemies. So all these wicked that are bringing judgment on the earth are being used by the Most High to do his will. What is See, so judgment coming to the wicked, that includes wicked Israelites. And a reward for those that keep his word and that tremble at his word. Let's read that again. Isaiah 66 verse 5. Hear the word of the Lord, ye that tremble at his word, your brethren that hated you, that cast you out for my name's sake, said, Let the Lord be glorified, but he shall appear to your joy. And they shall be ashamed. A voice of noise from the city, a voice from the temple, a voice of the Lord that rendereth recompense to his enemies. Recompense means to pay back. So he's going to raise up adversaries to do his bidding on the earth. Sinister or left hand side spirits. That's going to bring judgment unto you. And these men are straight savage. And when Israel went off, he said what? I will raise up a nation of fierce countenance that shall not regard the man of old age, neither show favor to the young. So we're under a nation of fierce countenance, left-hand side or sinister side spirits. The wicked. Look at this man. No soul. These are Satan's children. The wicked. Jeffrey Dahmer. Sodomized. Ate. His victims. Cooked his victims. After torturing. Raping. And murdering them. Unbelievable. So we are to fear the Lord and seek Him, ask for mercy, and repent. Because the Most High raises up straight, savage monsters to bring judgment upon you if you hate His word, if you hate His statutes, if you hate His prophets and His people. I'm going to show you that the third and fourth generation the spirit of the Lord is doing these things and that our spirits are eternal but our bodies are temporary shells so these men are straight wicked so the most high visits the iniquity of the children to the third and fourth generation 
think we want to go to Numbers 14, verse 18. And we'll close out there. So I went long enough. Let's go to the book of Numbers, chapter 14, verse 18. The Lord is long-suffering and of great mercy, forgiving iniquity and transgression, and by no means clearing the guilty, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation. So the Most High brings this judgment. And if you commit murder, you get murder. Where did I want to go? There was one more I wanted to get here. Okay, Nahum. Let's go to Nahum. One. I think it's somewhere around verse three. Nahum one. Verse three. The Lord is slow to anger and great in power, and will not at all acquit the wicked. The Lord have his way in the whirlwind and in the storm, and the clouds are the dust of his feet. See? So he is bringing these judgments upon you. Notice it says great in power. Let's go back to Hebrews 10 and 31. Let's look up that word hands. That's the power of the Lord. The hand of the Lord, he's using the wicked. Let's look at that word hands again. Watch what it says. See, look at this. Applied to God, symbolizing his might, activity, and power. Punishing. See that? Let's go back to Nahum 1 and 3. Nahum 1, verse 3. The Lord is slow to anger and great in power and will not at all acquit the wicked. The Lord have his way in the whirlwind and in the storm and the clouds are the dust of his feet. So that final judgment or evil, bad times, or the day of the Lord is going to be the final epic judgment upon the earth by the chariots of fire, the chariots of the Lord that we can read about in Isaiah chapter 66, the so-called UFOs. Now, hopefully this lesson has been edifying. All praises to Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, by Hashem, or Kadash. It is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God, Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai. Double honors to the elders and the apostles of Great Millstone. Much respect and honor to the brothers doing the work and pushing this truth in truth and sincerity and in all humility throughout the four corners of the earth. Salutations to the hopeful elect scattered abroad. See you on the next lesson. Lord willing. Kwam Yasharala. And abide the bow. Barak We got next. Lord willing. Shalom. <coughs>